Hi friends, welcome back to Faith and Arrow Homestead. My name is Jaylee and today we are going to do some canning because I am full of restless energy because I want to start my seeds so bad and we cannot yet. And so I'm going to use all of this pent up energy to do some canning projects. I've got a whole rack full of empty jars that we can go ahead and get some food in. So today we are going to be canning um, a meat sauce um, it is just a regular pasta sauce, but with meat in it. So we are going to be breaking out the pressure canner today. We are going to, while I have the pressure canner out, we're going to can some beans and we're also going to can some broth. So I'm really excited to get some food put up on my shelves. The very first thing that I want to do is get started with these tomatoes. So these are the last three bags of tomatoes that I have in my deep freezer. And I need 30 pounds of tomatoes for this recipe. And I'm not quite sure I'm terrible at judging weight. So I'm not quite sure if that's what this is. And I need to know how much I have because if I only have 15 pounds, then we'll have to have this recipe. And I need to know. So I'm going to um, use my scale to see precisely how many tomatoes I have here. And then here I have 2.6. So I have eight pounds, one ounce all together. So I'm only working with eight pounds of tomatoes, which means we're just going to have to adjust this recipe because it is a 30 pound recipe. Um, and so I'm just going to have to do um, a third of the recipe instead. So for now, I'm just going to let these tomatoes hang out in here because these came right out of the freezer. So it's gonna take a little bit of time for these to warm up and cook down. This is These projects are definitely going to take me all day. It is Friday and I have nothing going on today or tonight. And it is a really beautiful day. It's supposed to be 50 degrees today. So I foresee myself opening up these kitchen windows and I'm just gonna have a lovely day in the kitchen getting caught up on some canning projects. It'll be really nice to get um, the tomatoes cleared out. I've got more soup bones um, in the freezer that need to get cleared out. I've been needing to can up more beans for a while, so it's just gonna be really nice to kind of get some things cleaned out. I do this every year. I go through my freezer and I say, what do I have that I need to use? I also have some corn that I need to use and I've got some blueberries that I need to use. So I'm gonna be thinking about projects for getting those out of the freezer. And we're just gonna be making room because I have big plans this year for preserving food and I want my freezers to be cleaned out and ready to go. So let's move on to the next project while these tomatoes are cooking. So we have two different books that we're gonna be using today and I'll have affiliate links down in the description for both of them. I've got this ball book um, that I really like, but it's just a smaller book, but there are some recipes in here that I really like. And then this book is a lot bigger um, and I really like this one as well. And we'll be using both of these. I would be able to get away with just using this one, but it doesn't have the bean recipe that I need. Um, this one has the recipe for canning dried beans, which is what we'll be doing because I have a, ba a bag of organic black beans from Azure Standard. And I bought these. I didn't originally buy these to can. I bought these because Tom and I really don't like beans and I'm trying to include them in our diet more. So if you have any recipes that use black beans or any beans, give them to me down in the comments, please, because um, I really am trying to include beans in our diet more. Um, and so I bought these black beans to try and cook with more. And um, I ended up, uh, when I got my pressure canner, this was the very first thing I canned was beans. Um, and I've been using them in my chili. I have a hidden bean chili recipe up on my website. I'll link it down in the description. Um, and that's what I've been using these for because we really don't like beans. But um, I've made enough chili now that I only have one can of the beans left on my shelf. And it's so convenient to have these canned up because if I were to decide today that I wanted to cook with these, I'd have to know early in the day because these are dried and it takes time to get them to where you can consume them. So having them already cooked on the shelf is very, very convenient. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And this calls for two and a quarter pounds. Cool, so I'm only um, one, I'm only about an ounce shy of two and a quarter and that's fine. I'm gonna follow the recipe like normal. That's not that big of a discrepancy. I'm so happy that it's working out that this was the rest of that bag because um, that got something else off my pantry shelf um, into a form that is easier for me to include in my cooking, more likely that I'll actually use it in the kitchen. So the next step here is to wash these beans under cold water. And 
then you want to drain them. And then while they're in the strainer, I always give them another quick rinse. I'm going to pour these in here. And we are going to cover these with water so that they're covered by two inches. Beans are so easy. They're very easy to cook and they're very easy to can. And so um, we have washed them, we've drained them, we've put them in the pot and covered them with two inches of water. And now we bring them up to a boil, boil them for two minutes, turn off the heat and you just let them sit for an hour. Really, really easy. I wanted to go ahead and get that going because it can be working in the background while we go ahead and move on to the next project. I'm not gonna go very in depth on the beef broth, the beef stock, because I have a whole video and a whole blog post up on my website about it. I'll link that in the description. But I just want to touch really quickly on um, measurements because I have almost exactly six pounds. I've got like six pounds and like a quarter ounce of bones. And the way that I do my measuring is I take the weight in pounds minus one, and that's how many quarts of water I need. So I've got six pounds minus one equals five quarts of water. There are four cups in a quart, so I need 20 cups of water. And I really enjoy this ratio. It ends up giving me, um, after I cook it down throughout the day, I end up with a really nice, thick, rich, gelatinous broth, and it just really works well for me. So I wanted to mention that. I'm going to throw a couple onions in here, a couple carrots, a couple bay leaves, and I'm going to get this going on the stove. At this point, it is 10 o'clock in the morning and this is probably going to go all day. I imagine, um, I think I'm probably, I'm probably gonna have to can the broth in the morning. I'm not gonna wanna do it tonight. And you also have to let the broth um, cool so that you can skim all the fat off of it, which we'll talk about when it gets to that point. Um, and that takes a little bit more time. So I think I'll probably be able to do, I know I'll be able to do the beans today. I'll very likely be able to do the sauce today. And I think we'll just have to do the broth in the morning, which is totally fine because I knew when I started these projects that it might bleed over into tomorrow morning and that's totally fine. So I'm going to go ahead and get this going and let it work all day. Since it is such a gorgeous day whoo, and we've got so many things going on the inside, I figure let's come out here and take a look at a couple things. Oh, look at Cheeto. I can't see you. It is so bright. You're getting some sun, buddy. We've got Benny. <laughs> Let's come over here and take a look at these kale plants. They're not getting big very quickly because we have short days still. There's just not as much sunlight. Um, but they have doubled in size since I've put them out here and they're looking really good. So my little tote greenhouse is working nicely. Let's come over here and let these chickens out. guys we can think about our beans that hour is up so as you can see here this was covered with two inches of water and it has absorbed all of that water so we're gonna go ahead and pour these into our strainer and then we're actually just going to pour them after they've had a second to drain we're gonna pour them right back into that same pot I want to experiment one day to see if we can use that drained 
bean water as a natural dye because it is the most lovely like purpley navy color and I think it would be so pretty to like dye an apron or dress that color um, and so I really want to experiment someday and see if we can do that. So we're going to do the exact same thing that we did before. We're going to cover these with, uh, fill this up with water. It's going to take more water because these are now hydrated so it takes up more space in the pan. So we're going to fill this back up with water so that it's covered by two inches. And we are going to bring this to a boil and we are going to boil it for 30 minutes. And this is the last step until we are able to can these. And so I'm going to go ahead and get my jars clean. I'm going to go ahead and get the canner out and I'm going to get everything ready that we need because I want to go ahead and can these beans and get this this first project out of the way and it's going to feel so good to have a win under our belt and it's just going to tick something right off of the list of things that we need to do today. Now, okay, this makes six pint jars of beans. I have found in my use for these that that is too much at one time and I end up having a jar of beans just hanging out in the fridge half used and I go so far in between my, uh, my chili making that I end up really just throwing this out into the compost. Um, and so I don't want to do pints. I want to do half pints. This does not have half pints listed as an option, probably only because most people are not canning half pints of beans. It has pints and quarts. So I'm going to do, it says you can do six pints. I'm going to see if I can't do 12 half pints or somewhere around there. And I am going to, um, it says to, for pint jars, process them for one hour and 15 minutes. I'm going to Google it and see if I can't find a time for half pints. And if I can't, then to be safe, I'll just go ahead and do the hour and 15 minutes. So everything that I'm seeing online says that the process times for half pint and pint jars are the same. And when I Googled specifically black beans, it did say an hour and 15 minutes, which I believe is what I just said this said. An hour and 15 minutes. So that's fine. That's what I was thinking we would do anyway. So no problem whatsoever. So we will pressure can those for an hour and 15 minutes after these are done boiling for 30 minutes. So like I said, I'm going to start getting my jars together. I went ahead and washed up um, 12 half pint jars. And then while I was at the sink, I went ahead and washed up a, a few pint jars as well. I don't know how many of those I'm going to need yet. And I didn't count. I just grabbed some and washed them. Um, so that they could get drying. So I just want to make a quick comment. This is, I have ha I have two full years of homesteading under my belt. Um, I'm just starting my third year of homesteading and I have quite the collection of jars. Jars have never been my issue. Um, I have purchased them new. I've purchased them used from garage sales and Goodwill. I've had friends and family member give them to me. I've got lots of jars for just Tom and I and the, the level of preserving that I've done so far. Maybe this year I'll need to buy some more, but I might even be able to get through with the jars that I have. Lids are always the issue for me because I don't reuse lids, um, and so I have to buy them new every time I can. And um, I, you know, I'm on a budget. <laughs> and so I try to remember to grab a pack every time I go to the store. I've not been grocery shopping in almost three months now. I haven't had the money to go grocery shopping. So I haven't walked away with lids in some time now since fall of last year maybe. Um, and I only have two packs. Where did I put them? I only have two packs plus um, some lids that came in a box with jars because when you buy jars new from the store with lids, you can obviously use those lids. So I've got some from a box and then I've got um, two boxes of lids and this is always my limiting factor. When it comes to how much I can can at one time, I always have to think, do I have enough lids? And I just wanted to make that note. If you're new to this, if you're just getting into canning, if you're on a very, 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 very tight budget like I am, lids are always my limiting factor. And my piece of advice is to just, when you are out at the store or when you're at Tractor Supply picking up supplies for your chickens, just grab a pack. Um, and that's how I keep myself in stock of them. Someday I'd like to be able to buy them in bulk or maybe even be sponsored by a, a lid company, a, a company that 
produces lids, but for now, that's what I do. So I've got these going. Here we've got my All-American pressure canner. I've got the 921 model, I think. Um, I'll have it linked, uh, a link down in the description for you. Um, and I store it with the lid upside down inside of it like this. This model that I have, uh, yep, I was right, the 921, it says it right here, is a two-layer um, model, and I got it that way on purpose. I wanted one that could do two batches at once, so I'm gonna put this down in the bottom, um, and for the 12 jars of beans, I may need to do a second layer. So I'm gonna just set this aside here, and now I have no counter space, you guys. Someday, someday I'll have a nice big kitchen. Um, I'm gonna very, you don't ever wanna drop your lid. That's like the one thing you don't ever, ever, ever wanna do. Nice and secure right there. We are gonna go ahead and fill this up. And since I'm talking to you, I'm just confirming and making sure that everything I say is true. For water, it says during cooking or canning, you should use two to three inches of hot water in the bottom of your canner before you place the filled jars on the rack. So I always start with three, maybe even four inches of water because I get this starting to warm up while I'm filling my jars. And obviously a little bit of it is going to evaporate while I am waiting to start filling it. So I'm going to put three-ish, close to four inches of water in here. That is one of the things that you really need to make sure you're doing correctly because if you don't have the adequate amount of water in here, that can really become a safety issue. And you can also ruin your pressure canner by um, trying to pressure can without the correct amount of water in here. So I just want to, this might sound a little ridiculous to some of you guys, but I'm going to throw it out there. If you're very, very nervous about doing this wrong, you can even use a tape measure. So I just stuck it in here and there's two and a half, uh, almost two and a half inches of water in here. So I'm going to put a little bit more in. Now I have just a little over three inches, which is exactly what I was going for. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. Don't like feel like you've got to be cool or feel like you have to know what you're doing to get started little t tricks like that to just make sh just for your own peace of mind like okay i've definitely got the right amount of water in there that's totally fine you can do those things all right now it is almost jar filling time so i've got a pot holder here it's just two minutes left on those boiling beans so i'm gonna go ahead and start turning my jars over here and i'm also going to get my lids warming up. I've had so many people, I've heard so many people say, you don't have to boil your lids. And that's fine, that's awesome. I'm gonna boil my lids. <laughs> it makes me feel better. I don't know, I just, that way I know they're definitely clean and it gets the seal nice and, the gummy seal nice and warm and ready to be sealed and I like it. I don't think there's any harm in it. I've not heard anybody say you shouldn't because it's not safe. So I'm gonna do it. You guys do whatever you're comfortable with. As long as there's not any like very obvious, well-known safety reasons why you shouldn't. These are the kinds of things that are just personal preference. All right. So these are good to go. These are our hot beans. So let's take a look at our book and see what it says we do next. So it says pack hot beans into a hot jar, leaving one inch of headspace, add half a teaspoon of salt to a pint jar, um, ladle hot cooking liquid or boil, boiling water over the beans, leaving one inch of headspace. Remove air bubbles, clean the, the jar rim. So we are gonna do just that. And I always start out doing this like super, like just roughly, and I'm not very like careful. I don't look at measurements. I just kind of start packing them and then we will come back around and make sure that all of them have everything that they need. So I, so this said that it yielded six pints. So I was thinking 12 half pints. Um, and I have enough to do 
um, a few more. I could probably do like three more, but I'm not going to because I'm going to go through here and top these off if I have to top them off. And whatever I have left, I'll just freeze because I don't have a lot of lids left. And also, I just don't feel like washing any more half pint jars right now. Um, so what I'm going to do now, because all of these are decently filled with the beans, they need to be filled with liquid. So I'm going to go back through now. And there's quite a bit of liquid left in here. And I'm just going to go through and top all these off with the hot liquid that's in here. And if I get to the end and I run out, I can um, add more water in here and boil it for a quick second. And I can just top it off with um, more hot liquid. And that would be just fine. Here's what it looks like without adequate liquid. And here's what it looks like with adequate liquid. And so I need all of these to look like these ones. All right, you guys, I have my um, pressure canner over here, lid off. I've got the heat on. I'm just warming it up. And then I have all 12 of my jars. I did end up having to boil maybe two more cups of water to get these all filled with the liquid. And then I've got a bowl of beans left over here. Like I said, that's probably two, almost three more pints. It's fine. I'm just going to freeze them. You can also freeze beans as well as can them. That's no problem whatsoever. So now I'm going to bring all of these over here. I've got my lids. I turned the heat off on my lids. They boiled for just a second and that's all they need and then for me the way that I like to get the bubbles out and maybe you guys are gonna hate this but it has worked well for me I just tap it on the counter and it does a great job without me having to run a metal knife around the inside of my glass jar I just tap it like this and it does a great job getting all those bubbles out so that's that's what I do to get the bubbles out you can actually see them rise up to the surface and pop. It takes about five or six, seven good taps, and I feel good about it. It also helps you settle everything in your jar and gives you a really good idea for um, you know, how much is in your jar, if you need to add more, if you need to take some out. Next, I'm just going to run a damp paper towel along the edges here. And the purpose of doing that is to make sure that you have nothing impeding a real nice good seal on these. Okay, next, let's get these lids on. And you always want to take a look at the gummy seal. Make sure the lid has not been damaged in any way. And so I just always take a second to look at it before I place it on the jar. All right, and now pressure canning is the same as uh, water bath canning in many ways. And one of them is that when you're putting on your rings, you're still just doing fingertip tight, which just means that you are tightening it as much as you can just using your fingertips. You're not using your palm to like really tighten it as tight as you can. Um, and that is the same for both water canning as well as pressure canning. If you are um, somebody who has been water bath canning so far, you may see many similarities in the processes. And that's true, really the only difference is obviously the, the recipe that you're using because you can have a lower acidity food when you are pressure canning, that's why you're pressure canning. And then um, you will start to see some very obvious differences here shortly when we come over to the stove and start using our pressure canner. Okay, and now we can come over and start loading these into our pressure canner. And just like with a water bath canner, you want to keep some space in between. And look at that. We do have cause to use our divider. That's exciting. I don't think I've had to use this yet. Beautiful. Awesome. This is so exciting. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and get the lid on. This notch lines up with this arrow. So if you were to put it on with it kind of to the side like this, that's fine. And then you would use the handle to just turn it because when this and this is perfectly lined up, these little handles are underneath right here. These little guys. Now these are called wing nuts and you want to lift one of them up and then you want to do the one opposite. So on the other side over here, and then you're going to tighten those at the same time opposite each other. 
Now, before we move on to tightening any of the other ones, you wanna make sure that this gap is even. And so you can stand on the side and look at on both sides this gap is a little um, wider than over here, so I'm gonna tighten this one just a little bit more and loosen this one just a little bit. And that looks good. And it does not have to be perfect, but you want it to be close. And then once you've eyeballed that and you've seen that your gap is pretty even across, now you can go through and start tightening the other wing nuts but you're gonna do the same process. You're gonna go opposite each other and you're gonna tighten them. Go opposite and tighten them. And then just take a look at it and make sure that your gap still looks really nice and even. And then you just wanna go through and just with your hands, tighten these as tight as you can get them. Don't use a wrench or any other tool just use your own hands and tighten them as much as you can. Now at this point, I've got this on high. So this is coming up to pressure now. We're gonna keep an eye on this little vent right here. And we need to wait until we see steam coming out of this vent pipe continuously for 10 minutes before we move on to the next step. I don't know if you can see this at all but the steam is coming out of that steadily, and it has been for a couple of minutes. So I went ahead and set my timer for 10 minutes. This is the part in the process where this starts to feel a little scary because the steam is coming very consistently through here and it's loud, you can hear the bubbling, and it just, it sounds like something's happening and it can be a little disconcerting. But remember, the steam is escaping. And over here on the pressure gauge, it has not moved because pressure is not building in here because it's escaping through here. So it isn't until we add our weighted pressure gauge that this actually starts to build pressure. This will start to actually register some pressure. And as soon as we place this on and we hear the very first jiggle, that's when we start the timer for our hour and 15 minutes. Now let's talk about this weighted pressure gauge. The thing I like about the All-American Pressure Canners is that it um, uh, gauges the pressure two different ways. It has the readout over here, and it also has this. These are not always accurate, and these can, um, if you have a pressure canner that only has the dial gauge, you have to get those calibrated every now and then to make sure that they're accurate. This is always accurate. You can see that it has a five, a 10 and a 15. We are going to be pressure canning today at the 10. And we know that because our recipe told us that. And so there's a corresponding hole to go with the 10. And here in another 24 seconds, we are going to place this on here where the steam is coming out. And this is going to tell us how many pounds of pressure we have in our canner. All right, it has been the 10 minutes. This is a little hot, but it's never burned me before. Just be careful. You want to place that right on there. And the very first time that this jiggles, you start your timer for the hour and 15 minutes. Immediately, this started going up because that steam is no longer escaping. And so this is now actually building pressure. And that is what pressure cans are food. It's trying to jiggle. Usually I start the timer here, but I really want you to hear the jiggle. There it goes. All right, as soon as it starts to do this, you can start your timer. And I like to have my timer, there it goes. All right. So as soon as that happens, you can start your timer. So I'm gonna get an hour and 15 minutes going on my stove here. All right, now, 
I went ahead and turned my heat down to medium. And I, I know you can't see it very well, but over here, the dial gauge is also reading 10 pounds of pressure. And this jiggling on the 10 is indicating to us that this is at or above 10 pounds of pressure. So now what you need to do, and this gets easier with experience, you don't want that to do that more than four times a minute. So I always, um, because I'm still new enough at this, I start a timer on my phone and I count how many times it does that in a minute. The name of the game here, you want this to jiggle at least once a minute because if it's not, it's not hot enough. But if it jiggles more than four times a minute, it's too hot. So where we're at right now is fine. I can keep it at this temperature. Although I know from experience that with the heat that I have it at, it's gonna to continue to build pressure. So I did go ahead and turn it down a little bit. I have a gas range, um, an open flame range. And so it is very um, finicky for me and I have to get it in just the right spot to keep it at the temperature that I want it to be at because we have to keep it here for an hour and 15 minutes. And I don't like having to stand here and babysit it for a whole hour but it comes with experience being able to know, see what I mean? It comes with experience being able to know where to keep it at. All right, so I'm going to keep an eye on this and let it process for an hour and 15 minutes. All right, now of course we wanna utilize our time in the kitchen well. I have to be in here watching this. And so we're gonna go ahead and get our tomatoes put through the food mill. So this is my KitchenAid food mill. I absolutely love this thing. And I put the mixer on speed four, and then I just scoop my tomatoes in there. The discard comes uh, at the end here, and I feed it to the chickens, and then the juice will spill into this bowl here. I'm gonna go ahead and pause this because I am running out of room in that container. I just quickly washed up the pot that had the black beans in it. Um, and honestly, hindsight, I probably could have just used this to start with instead of dirtying this. But you know, you live and you learn. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour it in here now and we will just have the remainder of it go right into this pot. Let's go ahead and give the chickens these tomato scraps from the food mill. Now in my living room in here, this window here next to the fireplace, this is my chicken snack video and they very well know it. So watch this, watch how they come running when I open this window. They're like, what you got mom? What's up guys, you want some snacks? Yeah, chicky, 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 chicky. Yeah, chicky, 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 chicky. There they all come. For reference, 
those are my kale plants right down there. Oh, it feels so nice. I think I'm going to leave that window open. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful out. All right, this has been going for an hour and 15 minutes. So now we're going to go ahead and turn the heat off. And the very first thing that you want to do after you turn the heat off is let this dial gauge go all the way to zero. This takes a few minutes. And so usually I take this as an opportunity to go sit down for a few minutes. However, you do not want to forget about this because as soon as that pressure, pressure gauge gets to zero, we take the weighted gauge off. And if you leave it on for too long after this has gotten to zero, um, this can create a vacuum and it can become very difficult to get the lid off. So this takes a few minutes for the pressure to reduce. Usually I set a timer on my phone for like five to seven minutes and I go sit down. <laughs> All right, you guys, this is at zero, so we can go ahead and take this off. Use a hot pad because this is a very warm piece of metal. And then we wait two minutes, okay? After the two minutes, we can start putting down the wing nuts. And then when you lift off the lid, you want to lift it away from your face. And obviously now we are just going to let it sit and um, cool. We're not going to touch this or mess with this. We're going to let our jars seal. We're going to let this get nice and cool. And I'm going to go have some lunch and have a rest. And then we will come back and continue with our projects. All right, we are moving right along here today. Um, I am definitely going to can the broth tomorrow because it is 3.30. Um, it's been going for a few hours, but I'd like for it to go longer and I'm ready to be done <laughs> for the day, which is fine. You know, when you're doing projects like this, you can always be honest with yourself and nobody is expecting anything from you except you. So always give yourself grace and um, don't let yourself feel rushed, protect your peace and just do the best that you can do. So we're gonna finish up this sauce and we're gonna can it today and then I'm gonna do the broth tomorrow. So I've decided I'm not going to give you the measurements for this sauce because I had to third the sauce because I didn't have enough ingredients. And anytime you deviate from a canning recipe, you're taking a bit of a risk, a risk that I'm comfortable with, but a risk that I'm not comfortable sharing with others. Um, and so here I've got my sauce that we um, sent through the food mill. It's beautiful, it's nice and smooth. And I just have it kind of simmering away over here, reducing a little bit um, because there is quite a lot of, um, it's very thin, and so I am letting it kind of cook over here and reduce. Here I have um, ground beef, garlic, onion, and pepper. It was very exciting because the pepper I vacuum sealed um, from last year's garden, which was nice to be able to pull that out and use it. So we're going to be getting this into our sauce mixture, and then I'm also going to go ahead and add, oh, there's also salt and pepper in here. Um, I don't have any basil or oregano right now. Um, either of those I would have liked to have used in this recipe. I don't have either one. So um, it just is what it is, and I'm going to have to go without it, although I would have really liked to have had one or both of those in there. So I'm going to add some brown sugar to this. That's going to be delicious in this meat sauce. And now we can go ahead and get our ground beef and vegetables in this sauce. All right, and then I'm going to let this come up to temperature and I'm just going to let this simmer away for a little while and uh, reduce a little bit more. So I ended up with six jars of meat sauce and look at how pretty that is. That is gorgeous. I have never, this is my first time canning meat, a meat product. Um, you have to pressure can it. And um, so this is 
now in the future when I want spaghetti, all I have to do is cook up the noodles. I already have the sauce, the veggies, the meat already all in one can. I am really wanting to look into more um, convenience canning, canning um, whole meals where you only have to add noodles or rice or you know something like that. Um, I'm really wanting to can chili. I wanna can sloppy joe mix. And this meated spaghetti sauce seemed like the very best place to start learning um, and getting comfortable with uh, canning meats and um, canning uh, kind of more convenience meals. So I'm not going to get into the whole canning process for this one. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. I, I pretty extensively showed you when we did the beans. And so I probably, I'm thinking I'll probably see you guys again in the morning when we can up this uh, broth. So I am actually really bummed this morning um, because I had some seal failures. One jar of beans and two jars of the sauce. I really actually don't know what happened. So if you watched this and you saw any errors that I made or if you have any ideas, let me know. I've never ever had a seal failure when pressure canning before. I'm really surprised. I know all of my lids were new. I definitely had the right amount of water in there. I was at the right amount of pounds the entire time. So I'm really not sure what happened with that one. Um, so with these three, the beans, I'm just gonna put right in the freezer. There's not a whole lot of liquid in here, so I'm not too worried about expansion. Um, with these two, if I were to put these right in the freezer right now, there's a chance that these jars would break because they're so full. So um, I'm probably gonna put them in more appropriate freezer containers and freeze these, and that's fine. It's not that big of a deal. I was just a little bummed. I was like, oh, what's going on? Why did this happen? So this morning, we're gonna go ahead and move into our broth. And there are only a couple of little things that I wanna show you about this. I'm not gonna go through the whole process with you. Again, I have a video where we made the broth together. I'll link that down in the description. And I'm doing the exact same pressure canning steps as I did when we did the beans together. So that's all the same. Um, but when you are pressure canning broth, there's a couple of things that you need to do differently. First, I wanna show you that the reason broth takes a little longer is because you need to let this cool completely down so that the fat can collect on top. So this is a hard layer of fat that we need to actually remove. I'm going to be really honest with you. When it comes to broth, I almost never pressure can it. I really prefer to freeze my broth because I want this fat. I like it, I like the taste of it, I like the nutrition that it adds to the food. I like to use it when I'm making roux in place of butter. <clears throat> and so I really like the fat that comes from the broth. And I'm not going to discard this, I'm going to keep this in a separate container and still use it here in my kitchen. When you pressure can, it actually um, diminishes the nutritional value of whatever it is you're canning because of the high heat for a long period of time. So um, broth is a great example of something that I freeze because I want every bit of that nutrition that I can possibly get out of it and pressure canning diminishes that. However, pressure canning in my mind is absolutely a convenience. Um, having broth um, thawed and on the shelves that I can just pop open a jar and pour it in something that I'm trying to make last minute for dinner is worth the diminished nutrition, if that makes sense. Um, because the alternative to that is eating something that isn't going to be nourishing to us anyway because I'm in a hurry, right? So I'd rather just have the convenience on my shelves. So I do like to keep about a dozen jars of broth on my pantry shelves canned just for convenience, but if I had to choose, I would freeze it. And I have broth in my freezer right now, so I'm covered on both on both ends. So right now we're going to just go ahead and scoop this um, fat out of here and into a separate container. Don't stress about getting it all. There are a couple little um, pieces still floating around in here and that's that's fine but you want to get the bulk of it and this is absolute nutrient dense goodness that I want I do not want to just throw this away so I'm gonna store it in my fridge and use it just like one would use bacon grease in the kitchen 
Something else that I would like to point out is that this needs to be strained. And you can do that at two different times. I could have done it last night while it was still warm before I put it out in the fridge um, to let the fat rise to the top and harden. Um, or I can do it now. I was tired last night and ready for bed and I didn't feel like doing it. So we're gonna do it today. I'm going to go ahead and get this heating up and nice and warm again on my stove. And while it's warming up, I will prepare my uh, straining station. Actually, for longevity purposes, I think I'm gonna keep this in the freezer because this is quite a bit. I haven't had to do this in a while because I've been freezing my broth. Um, and I do remember keeping it in the fridge, but I don't think I had this much. This is a pretty big batch of broth. Um, and I don't know that I'll use this in time to keep it in the fridge. So I'm going to keep this in the freezer instead. All right, you guys, you have heard me say I do not like hot liquids in plastic. And so I always use one of my big glass casserole dishes. I have a few of these and I really like them. And then I've got um, this big strainer. Now, I do not finally... Um, strain my broth. Uh, the book recommends it. You can put a piece of cheesecloth in here and it'll catch all of that fine sediment that is in here. I don't bother with that. I like the taste of it. To me, it's just added nutrition, added bulk in whatever I'm making, casserole, soup, whatever it is. I don't mind that sediment. And I really don't hardly ever have cheesecloth on hand. So I just don't fool with it. This strainer is very fine and it'll catch the bulk of what I don't want in my broth. I've had this over here on the stove for just like five minutes. We're just warming it up. Um, we need to put hot broth in the hot canner, so it needs to be warmed up anyway. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and strain it right in here. See what I mean? It catches quite a bit of this really fine stuff, but there's still going to be quite a bit of sediment in this broth. And I, I personally really don't mind, but if you want a really clear, smooth broth um, that doesn't have anything in it, then use a piece of cheesecloth when you strain it. Now I have seven jars here. We'll go ahead and fill these and see roughly how much is left and maybe I'll go wash more jars. So we're just gonna ladle the broth right in here and we're gonna leave about an inch of headspace. So my tripod just broke. I'm very lucky that my camera did not break. Um, so I have to order a new one, but luckily we're at the end of this video and this is the end of my filming for the week. So I'll have time to order one Amazon Prime and get it here before I need to film next. But there are a couple more things I want to show you. So um, I want you to notice in here all of this sediment. So when you choose to strain it the way that I did without using cheesecloth, um, if you don't want all of that sediment in your jars, then you just have to be very careful when you are scooping it out. It's almost like sand at the beach when you're in the shallow water. You just have to kind of scoop and then like let it settle and then scoop off the top and then let it settle. And this is what we're left with. There's a little bit of broth left in here, as you can see, but look at all that sediment. Um, I'm going to put this on Benny's dog food. I'll put it in the chicken's food this morning. So it definitely won't get wasted, but I don't really want all of that sediment in my jars. So here we've got my, I did end up having enough for seven jars. And there is some sediment in there. You can see it on the bottom, but not nearly as much as if I had included all of that from um, my glass dish. So one last thing that you have to do when you are canning broth. We've got a little distilled white vinegar here and a paper towel with the distilled white vinegar. And that's what we're going to use to clean the rims of our jars. We do this because the distilled white vinegar can break up and um, cleanly wipe off any potential fat that is on the rim from when we um, poured in our broth because, and this is also why we remove the fat um, off the top before we warm it up um, when it's cold, all that fat that we skimmed off, we do that because that's the one thing that could really impede 
a good seal. The fat can get in underneath the lid, the rim here, and can cause a seal failure, um, can cause it not to seal properly. And so we remove the fat that we can possibly remove and we go through with a little vinegar on a paper towel and we clean the rims of any fat that might be hanging out. Um, I have made it a habit at this point in canning to just always use vinegar to clean my rims. I think it's really good practice. You don't have to, but if you're canning something fatty, then you absolutely should. All right, we are all done. To my knowledge, all of these sealed, but I don't fool with them for 24 hours and we just canned them this morning. So I'm gonna let them sit and hang out, but it looks like they all sealed. And this is what we ended up with, a day and kind of a morning of canning. And I'm so excited to have this food on my shelves. Does anybody else keep their freezer bags? I turn them inside out and I rinse them and I let them dry. <laughs> and I've been using these same freezer bags uh, to store my produce in the freezer for a couple of years now because they're expensive. I don't wanna keep buying them. Um, but anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me while we did some pressure canning. And uh, I hope that you guys, if you have a pressure canner and you've just been um, kind of too afraid to get started, just give it a shot. Start with beans. Beans are really easy to pressure can and um, you'll learn and get better at it and get more of a feel for it the more you do it. So thanks so much. I can't wait to see you in my next video. Have faith, my friends, and keep moving forward. Bye.